doing our differential calculus part one. Uh, uh, last time uh, we had uh, just introduced what uh, functions were uh, algebraically. Today I will go further uh, trying to explain geometrically how these functions are represented and how they are useful for our study. Uh, let me start presenting now so that uh, I can use my PPT and uh, other tools which I'll be using. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so this is what we were doing. Uh, I wanted to tell you geometry of functions. So as a first step, I would like to show you how to graph a few functions. In fact, I'm not going to tell you all the details because this is something you have learned in your pre-university course. Uh, what I will do is I will show specific examples of functions and show you the graph of the graph of those functions. Uh, try to remember <clears throat> the nature of these curves because they are very useful in the study of in the whole of your study of engineering. So let me illustrate these graphs uh, using uh, my favorite uh, tool, which is GeoGebra. Mm, so let me first, the easiest function, remember, recall, a function is a relation between variables. I mean, there are two things, one is X and is Y, and how are they related? So for example, we have seen many examples, I'll not bother about it, but I'll be specific now. Say for example, Y equal to X, that means, y equal to x, the y, uh, whatever is the value of x is the value of y also. So this is clearly a straight line. You must have seen this several times. y equal to mx plus c, m is slope 1, m is slope, and c is y intercept, which is 0. So I get a straight line passing through origin with slope 45 degrees. This is the easiest of all functions, uh, easiest in some sense. Uh, simplest, let me put it that way. Then if you take y equal to x square, this is the next function. This is also a polynomial function. I already told you what polynomials mean. Polynomials means basically I will have x power something, nothing else, just x power something. That's a monomial, but I could have some of these things. For example, x plus x square. That's another function and that's a polynomial function. Uh, so y equal to x is one function, y equal to x square is one function. I want to observe certain very elementary uh, facts about this. You see y equal to x, of course, as x increases, y also increases. Here also y equal to x square as x increases, y is also increasing. Uh, you can see these kind of things very easily by in the GeoGebra. You see the y core x coordinate of a, I will try to see. Uh, you see here, here, this is the x coordinate of 3, A, this is the x, y coordinate of A. As I move A, you will see that x and y coordinates are changing. You can also see it as geometrically, you can think of x coordinate as shadow of A on x axis. So, for example, when it is uh, A, point A is here, its shadow will fall on. 4 comma 0 which means 4 is the x coordinate of this point a similarly on y axis it's shadow it's shadow on y axis that means you think of a light here and light rays are coming from uh, east to west in this direction and the shadow will be here so that is the y coordinate in the first case you think of light here and it's light is coming from north to south then its shadow will be at this point. This is the x coordinate of A and this is the y coordinate of A. Both you can see here. This is the x coordinate of A, this is the y coordinate of A. I basically want you to see both geometrically and algebraically. You see, when I move this point A, x and y coordinate are increasing. Of course, y equal to x, so whatever x increases, y also increases by the same amount. There is no question of anything else, even in the negative side. So x and y move like this. Now, move like this means x and y are dependent on each other like this. It's the easiest of relation, easiest of functions. Y is same as x. Now, let us pick another point, rather pick a point on uh, this parabola. 
uh, this y equal to x square here if i try to move this you will see as i move b its x coordinate is of course decreasing see here for example when it's here x coordinate is 3 point whatever 2.99 3.3 nearly 3 so here it is this is the x coordinate of y this is the y coordinate of x coordinate of b this is y coordinate of b as i move you will see x and y coordinate both decreasing both are decreasing decreasing and as i cross x axis x coordinate continues to decrease but y coordinate starts increasing you can see that so these kind of relation how what happens to y coordinate when i change x coordinate are important aspects of study in science in general not just engineering or math but everywhere it is important to understand the changes so that's what i want to impress upon you change you can see it either in this equation i have not had told you how to see the change in y with respect to x algebraically or geometrically either one i have not told but in the picture in this graph you can see as x increases y also increases here also as x increases y also increases well it's not necessary that always x and y are increasing because for example if i make this y equal to minus x so then the uh, this is my line y equal to minus x this is the line uh, on this if i take point a uh, you see as x increases y will decrease you see point c uh, is the point on this line and as i decrease so here is the coordinates of uh, here are the coordinates of c x coordinate of c y coordinate of c you see as x coordinate increases here x coordinate is increasing as you, as that happens you can see the y coordinate is decreasing that's clearly clearly seen from the picture see here as y x coordinate of c is increasing y coordinate is decreasing so one basically what i'm trying to tell you is that one wants to capture these changes how the how x and y are changing with respect to each other or how x is changing with respect to y or y is changing with respect to x these are the kind of things which interest mathematicians scientists and engineers in general so let me start again so these are few of the functions geometrically plotted y equal to x which is a straight line y equal to x square i've already seen i'll plot one more y equal to x cube this is another curve you can see y equal to x cube looks like this that means understand what we are doing here for different values of x i have given different i have calculated different values of y for example here a is 1.69 y is 4.81 how did i get this 1.69 whole cube is 4.81 you can check that so now, uh, I mean, you know, let us take some easier. Uh, this, is, this is what I want to tell. See, the function increases, decreases in a very rapid way at times, depending on the function. See here, for example, when uh, x coordinate is 2, y coordinate is 8, as expected. Here, here it's showing me approximately, but we know that if x is 2, y is 8. So when x is 1, y is 1. That is easy to see. Similarly, x is 1.5, then y is uh, 1.5 cube should be whatever, some uh, 4 point something something or uh, 3 point something. Okay, doesn't matter. What I'm trying to tell you is change in x and change in y, I want to capture that. That's what I want to do. But before that, I want to see various polynomials, various functions of uh, different. I'm trying to give examples of different examples of functions. And then you can see, uh, I would like to give this also y equal to x square. I want you to observe certain things in these things. Uh, y equal to x power 4. You see, what is happening here is these, each one of this is a uh, you know this is y equal to x curve this is y equal to x square curve this is y equal to x cube this is y equal to x power 4 curve what is happening is you see as we increase the power the curve is coming you know it's uh, the value of y 
at a given x is increasing i'll uh, just show you one example let us try to see here uh, you see here uh, at say 1.5 at y equal to x y is 1.5 y equal to x square you take y uh, x equal to 1.5 you'll get 2.25 so 2.25 is obviously bigger than 1.5 similarly 1.5 cube is even bigger than 2.25 1.5 whole power 4 is even bigger than 1.5 whole cube like this what i'm trying to tell you is different values of x you take let's take uh take values keep increasing that is reflected in this nature of this curve you see curve is coming more and more towards y axis whatever it means um, uh, at given point of x say for example x equal to 3 y equal to x y is also 3 y equal to x the point on y equal to x will be here point on y equal to x square will be here that is 3 comma 9 and on x cube it will be 3 comma 27 it's way off here i can't show you in this picture uh, at, uh y uh, x y equal to x power 4 3 power 4 is 81 so it will go all the way this red curve will cross this straight line if i write, draw a straight line parallel to y axis it will intersect this parallel line at y equal to 81 so that we know that such that kind of things so uh, this is these are examples of polynomial monomials actually i not even bothered about general polynomials i've shown you just single x or x square or x cube on x power 4. now there is one more thing i told you we can do with functions we can try to add functions so when we try to add functions so let's say let's add these two functions y equal to x and x square so that will look like this x plus x square so if i do this see you see there's a difference between y equal to x square curve and y equal to x plus line is y equal to x square the black colored one is y equal to x square you can see there is a difference obviously there is, it's expected to be different there are different curves and you can see of course curve nature is somewhat similar means this as x increases x also will increase x square will also increase x plus x square will also increase so, such things i won't go into too much detail but I, people who are interested should explore these kind of uh, changes uh, x plus x square we can even do more manipulation for example i can say 3x plus x square so then you see how the function will change how geometry will change or you can add, put a coefficient for x square also for example you can put a 3 3x plus 3x square you see how it as you increase the coefficient of x square the curve seem to be closing in whatever it, i mean i'm sure you can understand what i'm saying uh, as i increase for example i say 10 so then you see the curve is closing, closing in further. Uh, if I make this smaller value, uh, instead of say 10, I will make it uh, 0.5. Then you see, this is becoming bigger. It's opening up, whatever. If you want, you can see where coefficient of x is fixed. Let's call it one itself. In this case, this is how it looks. As I increase the coefficient of x square, the curve will open up more for example 0.8 sorry as i increase the value of x the curve will close up more means it will come closer the two so-called arms of uh, the curve will come together come closer and closer these are some observations which i want you to be aware of these what i want you to be aware of is these coefficients will di dictate how the geometry of the curve is that's what i want to convey so obviously i don't have so much time so you can check that you plot out different uh, polynomials here i'll just put randomly something 5x plus 6x power 4 plus or why should it be only plus it can also be minus sometimes so minus 10 uh, x power 8 something i just randomly put some numbers so you see this is how this curve will look This is how this curve will look. Uh, nothing special about this curve. I just want you to get a feel, get a understanding that writing a polynomial 
is same as drawing a graph. There is a graph associated with a polynomial. For different polynomials, it will look different. That's okay. I mean, that, that's what uh, basically we want to capture. We want to try to see how when I change this, how the graph will change. That's what one wants to study. This is one set of uh, functions. There is another set of functions which are called, as we know, trigonometric functions. And their graphs are more, uh, you must have seen them more. For example, y equal to sine x, I'll pl plot. So this is the curve. We all know this, how it looks. So y equal to sine x looks like this. I also want you to be aware of things like how will y sine 2x look like. Uh, okay, I'll draw afresh because you want to compare the two. So I'll draw afresh uh, y equal to sine 2x. This is what y equal to sine 2x looks like. The blue color one is sine 2x, green color one is sine x. So I want you to see many, I, mean, I really don't have time to tell you the beautiful things which are happening here, but I would like you to spend some time on GeoGebra or as I told on a mobile phone, you use Desmos, download Desmos and plot these curves and see the beautiful symmetries. If you, in, in fact, uh, you know, I really don't have time. So I will just show the curves, sign 3x, how will it look? So sine 3x will look like this. Sorry, I should have typed it better. But anyway, sine 3x will look like this. Uh, you see, you see sine x once it goes like this and comes here, sine 3x will have gone three times. These kind of things one has to observe, one has to use. Also, you see, I want to see, I want you to see what happens instead of sine x, I want to say, sin 2x so uh, sorry not sin 2x that i already told you y equal to 2 sin x see this so original blue color is sin x the red color is sin 2x the graph of it i hope you understand what i am saying at different values of x i have computed values of y in the blue color thing i have been computing for different values of x what is the value of sin of x in the red color curve, which I've written here, P, that is two sine X. That means basically everybody has got multiplied by two. So whatever was here, minus one has become minus two. Minus 0.5 has become minus one. Similarly, what are two uh, here, at 2.5, value of Y may be 0.5. At 2.5, the value of P curve is double that. So, 2 sin x. So you can see that 2 sin x is like sin x only, but uh, amplitude is bigger. These are the kind of things I want you to observe. Uh, this is very useful. You will see, I, I'll write some more. y equal to, uh, say, 5 sin x. See, it's basically like sin x only, but uh, the variation is much more. Frequency is same, amplitude is different. When you try to increase the coefficient of x here, sine of whatever, then the frequency increases. When you, this is amplitude and this is frequency. These are important words. They will keep coming throughout in your course. So be aware of these kind of functions. Uh, here you must also be aware that you know as x increases, uh, sine x or sine two x or any of these doesn't go on increasing. Sometimes it increases, sometimes it decreases. Sometimes it increases, sometimes it decreases. Always within some limits decided by the amplitude. Anyway, these kind of things, some of this, some of you might know already. Those of you who don't know, I very highly recommend that you try to um, plot these graphs and try to become familiar with these graphs and see how much uh, beautiful symmetry is there in all these curves. I know these won't be asked in your examination, but understanding of these curves will help you to do many things in your engineering course. This is sort of prerequisite. You must know how these things look. Not just this. Uh, another important curve is uh, cos to a, cos x. So let me show it to you against sine x. I will show you cos x also. Cos x looks like this. 
See, the red curve is cos x. Uh, sin x is, however, sin x is, cos x is sort of shifted, shifted uh, by some unit, pi by 2 actually, backwards. Means whatever cos x is doing, sin x will do the same thing pi by 2 time afterwards. Whatever it means, meaning I'm not going to explain all these details, but you must be aware of these kind of connections between sine and cos. Soon we will see another beautiful connection between sine and cos. And also you must be knowing, and a similar thing for this also, for cos also, for example, if I say cos 2x, you should know how cos 2x and cos x, how they are related. Uh, maybe I will not say anything, but I will just plot some of these, some more of these and show you. Cos 2x. See, cos x and cos 2x are like this. Cos x start from 0 to, you see, uh, cos x looks like this. See, from here to here. See, cos 2x, what happens? Same place it starts. Blue one is cos 2x. It goes twice by the time it, by the time cos does one trip, cos 2x will have done two trips. Cos 3x will do three trips. These are the frequency. Amplitude remains the same. I also want you to see what happens if you write, if you change the amplitude, for example, 3 cos x. Then you see the amplitude has increased. Means the same cos x has become bigger in some sense. If you make cos 2x, it will go faster in some sense. So this bigness and fast, these two, play around between these is a lot of mathematics, engineering mathematics you will learn in next two years. Anyway, right now I want you to observe this also. Cos x also doesn't keep on increasing indefinitely forever. Uh, means for some, uh, for some regions, cos x is increasing, then it will decrease. For example, from 0 to this pi by 2, or y pi by 2, in fact, it is up to pi, cos is decreasing. But after pi to uh, 2 pi, it is increasing. So some places it decreases, some places it increases. But increase, decrease in a similar way all through. So uh, this, uh, unlike the polynomials where x, if x kept on increasing, y also kept on increasing. Here, such a thing doesn't happen. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And another important function, so this is sin x, this is cos x, and obviously the next important function is tan x. So tan x will look like this. So suddenly, you know, you will have many different, uh, uh, tan x will suddenly start looking uh, very weird compared to sine and cos because at pi by 2 it is not defined plus or minus infinity this is the curve of graph of tan x these are all things which you have to be familiar again i am not going to spend time explaining what happens tan x and tan 2x so you i want you to figure out such things using these graphing calculators or geogebra or whatever you want similarly what happens if i try to increase amplitude uh, those kind of things is what i want you to observe or I want you to play around with. So these are some of the easy functions. Uh, I've shown you polynomial functions. I have shown you trigonometric functions. Next, I want to show you the exponential function. Very important. So let us go slowly on this because there are a lot of nice things which one can show in this. But I really don't have time and it's this is not the platform to show all that. Uh, so I will show you some salient features of this only. So I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do is I'm showing you y equal to x, y equal to x square, y equal to x cube. I know I have shown you the, all this just few minutes ago, but why am I showing you again is I want you, I want to uh, emphasize a particular aspect of all these uh, curves. y equal to say x power 5. So let us take this. Now what I want to plot is, see as, as I type you must have seen y equal to x curve was like this x square it came closer to y axis x cube it came even closer x power 5 it came even closer as you keep on increasing the power this arm or this curve will come closer and closer to uh, y axis how close can it come there are such interesting questions you must have already seen it in your uh, puc uh, even if you are not seen 
you should try to uh, go home and check all these uh, curves i mean plot these curves and see their um, behavior what i want to show what i am showing you here is this curve e power x exponential of x means e power x you must have seen this in your differentiation course when you did uh, well, you know differentiation of e power x is same as e power x it's one curve which one function which does not change by differentiation i know i am not yet introduced what is differentiation but you know from your puc time i'm just trying to recall where you have might have seen this function e power x e power x is one wonderful function which is actually bigger than all the uh, polynomial functions it's difficult to see it here uh, because here it looks like you know the blue one is e power x the blue color blue color seem to be smaller than the green color but the point is if you go sufficiently large uh, x means if you take x very large then you will see that e power x will beat all other curves you see it's increasing 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 it will keep on increasing of course polynomials will also keep increasing i know i am not able to tell you this very precisely in this uh, lecture but this lecture it's not part of this lecture also but i just uh, i mean i'm tempted to uh, introduce these kind of things to you uh, that's why i'm telling for example you take x equal to here i cannot show you this at all you take x equal to 1000 1000 power 5 is smaller than e to the power of 1000 that's what i want to tell e power x will be bigger than any monomial you take even if you take x power 1000 e power x will be bigger than that not for a small values of x but for very large values of x uh, i am i'm, i'm not going to prove such things but i just want you to be aware e power x is a function which beats all polynomials hollow that's why we use this word exponential growth these are all uh, polynomial growth means these how x uh, y is increasing is like a polynomial means x and x square and x cube and things like that whereas e power x will grow much faster than any of these i have not proved this as of now but i just want you to be aware of such a uh, statement that's all i'm trying to tell so there are these are the kind of functions we will keep dealing we will keep meeting in our uh, Okay, this course and also huh, there is a logarithmic function that also i would, would like to introduce logarithmic function is the ulta the reverse of uh, some sort of inverse of exponential function so let me plot that and show you once see this this is log x that means log x is also an increasing function but it doesn't increase as fast as the other uh, functions the polynomial functions for example here just to compare that compare this with other function you see y equal to x is like this which means as x increases y will also increase this red color is log x so as x increases y is increasing when log x is also increasing but increase in log x is much small compared to increase in y equal to x in fact y equal to x square the increase will be even more y equal to x square the increase means as you increase the value of x y value is increasing y value is increasing in all three curves y equal to x square y equal to x log x in everywhere y is increasing because you see at 9 you take at x equal to 9 uh, the log 9 is somewhere here at x equal to 12 log 12 is bigger than log 9 similarly y equal to x of course 9 is smaller than 12 9 square is smaller than 12 square log 9 is smaller than log 12 all this is correct but log 12 minus log 9 is much smaller compared to 12 minus 9 which is smaller compared to 12 square minus 9 square these are the kind of things how we compare different functions you take a fixed value two fixed values of x see what are the values of y at those two x's and then subtract one by the other and try to compare we will do that in the next few steps but i just wanted you to see this curve log x looks like this this is also increasing but it's increasing very slowly very slowly in fact in the same figure i should must draw this also otherwise i'll not be doing justice to mathematics so let me 
do this. I want you to see that uh, uh, you see y equal to e power x and y equal to log x. They are sort of twins. You see this I get uh, the red curve and the blue curve are mirror images of each other where mirror is precisely this. This is the mirror line y equal to x is the mirror. That means x, y, e power x is increasing very rapidly, whereas log x is increasing very slowly. These are the two extremes of increasing functions. We want, I mean, I'm giving you a very rough idea of all these things, but these are all very important mathematically and even engineering wise. So anyway, so these are various examples of functions. And then I also wanted to show you their combinations. That was, I have already shown it, uh, but I did not specifically mention it. So let me specifically mention that. Uh, uh, what should I specifically mention? Here it is. For example, I know how y equal to x looks like. I know how y equal to x square looks like. Now I want you to see how y equal to x plus x square looks like. You see, there is a connection between the two. How uh, this y equal to x plus x square behaves more like x square. The x term is sort of gone. Gone means it's not zero effect because it has pushed, pulled rather y equal to uh, x plus x square a little bit that said. I mean, this is y equal to x plus x square, whereas this is y equal to x square. That y equal to x plus, when I add these two functions, it has pulled it a bit. That's the kind of thing you need to observe. Or you can even say y equal to, for example, another combination is y equal to x minus x square. So then what happens? You see, this become ultra, some sort of reflection of y equal to x square. I want you to keep these things in mind. I know these things will not be asked in your exam right now, but this is how you get a feel for different functions. If you want to become friends with these functions, polynomials, trigonometric functions, you have to play around with these functions a lot. You need to plot these graphs very often and try to become familiar with these functions. Once you are familiar with these functions, we can we are ready for the next level of uh, understanding of functions. Uh, that is precisely the next part. We want to capture change in y with respect to x at different values of x. At different so I know it's just abstract words right now. Uh, for example, I'll just give one example. I'll not give any definitions. Y equal to x square, let us take. Uh, what I want to tell is you take at when x changes from 1 to 2, y changes from 1 to 4. Try to understand. Y equal to x square, when x changes from 1 to 2, y changes from 1 to 4. So change in y is 3 for this curve. Change in x is only 1. So one wants to capture when changes in y, changes in x happen, how much does change in y happen? You see more, I'll give you more oral examples here. When x change, I'll first recall once whatever I done. When x changes from 1 to 2, the change in x is 1. y changes from 1 to 4. Change in y is 3. Now, when x changes from 2 to 3, change in x is 1 only. Change in y is from 4 to 9, that is 5. 4 to 9, that is 5. So, you see, the change in y is not same as change in x. Here, I, it x changed from 1 to 2, x changed, x changed only by 1, and change in y was 3. But when x change from 2 to 3, change is still 1, change in y is 5. So there is a change in change in y. One wants to capture these kind of things. That is what differentiation is all about. How to do this? How to capture this? What it is? You must have learned it in your class 12. But I will very briefly recall all these things. Not as a formula for differentiation, but trying to make you understand what differentiation is. We will meet again next time. Thank you.